let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about greenhouses and animals, in particular, heating greenhouses with animals. So something that's happened in the last few years in the agricultural marketplace is that people that take care of animals, I think there's a specific term for that, um, have been using greenhouse type structures. Now we're talking about a hoop house with some sort of plastic stretched over it to house their animals. But something we need to consider, especially in colder climates, is what happens or what has happened with a barn is that we fill a barn full of animals in the past, but there's no insulation. I've never seen an old barn with insulation, but these things house animals into 30, 40 below, especially where I live around Manitoba. So what's heating this? It's the heat from the bodies of the animals. So if there's that much heat coming off these animals, and there's also the methane that's coming off the rear end of them, why can't we also maybe section off the barn and have a transparent ceiling of some sort and grow some crops? I mean, heat's expensive. It's not cheap to heat something in 30, 40 below when the wind is howling. And yet these animals are fine inside a barn with no insulation. And these old barns, the wind was howling through them and they still had enough heat. So imagine if we had a plastic covering and contained all that heat. This is something to consider and what we're going to talk about today. Simple Tech. That's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You can check out after this one in our archives. In particular, we have a ton of videos on all kinds of different kinds types of heating. We have things like geothermal heating. We have compost heating. We have electric heating. We have solar heating, whether it's um, photovoltaic or heat solar. Um, there's a term for it and I'm forgetting it right now. That being said, if you're interested in heating your greenhouse, you got to check out our archives. Hit subscribe. You're going to see piles of stuff there. And if you get a chance, hit like. Okay? okay, so heating your greenhouse with animals. I've had people, when I've discussed this topic, tell me, well, you know, the chickens have a lot of feathers and that acts like insulation. Or the lambs got all this wool and they can handle 20, 30 below, no problem. So it's not really the amount of heat they're giving off. The animal itself has insulation. Okay. What about pigs and cows Ooh, hoo, hoo, or goats? Think about that for a second. They hardly got any insulation on them. And these things are handling the cold weather. A lot of them are outside in 20, 30, 40 below. But when you put them together in a barn that has a plastic cover on it, it heats up. And it's not the sun doing this because it heats up at night. So that's a lot of heat. Now, we know in most cases, raising animals for food is profitable. So the animals themselves are not losing you money to generate this heat. They're making you money. Now, what if a section of this barn is now a greenhouse and transparent so you can grow some plants? Now, okay, you're going to need some sort of chain link fence or, or steel netting to keep the animals out of your food. But we might be onto something here. So I'm a firm believer in that there's really nothing all that new in the world. We tend to just reinvent ideas that are existing. So along the idea of a greenhouse as a barn, well, we have started to see these around the countryside. But if we go to my favorite site, Alibaba, and start sniffing around there for commercial uses for a greenhouse, it's loaded with options of hoop houses that you can use for raising animals, for raising chickens, for raising pigs, for raising cows, for raising goats. And they're shipping these things all over the world right now. So this isn't a brand new concept. The idea of pairing them together though, this is something that works really well for a small farmer. And for a small farmer that wants to grow some crops and have some animals, whether it's some chickens where you get meat and eggs or cows where you've got milk and meat, or pigs that are just bacon. I mean, <laughs> who doesn't like bacon? But it gives you diversity in your portfolio so you can sell more things. So instead of just selling one thing to a person that comes by, you can sell them four, five, six, seven, you know, a bunch of different crops and maybe some animal products that you've produced. And if you're selling them direct to the consumer, there's good money there. 
So are there pre-made greenhouses that are set up for both animals and plants? I haven't seen one yet. I've seen some pictures of ones, but they've been made by the farmer. They're homemade. I don't think this is a very difficult thing to do, though. I mean, what does it really require to separate a portion of your barn slash greenhouse from animals to plants? I mean, we're just talking a chain link fence so they can't get through. I mean, sure, they're going to try. I mean, you know, look at those tasty vegetables. If you're a pig and you see a tasty vegetable in front of you, what's going through your mind? I'm a pig and I know what's going through mine. But <laughs> if you can get through 40 below by the heat given off by animals to keep your plants warm, this is going to save you a lot of money. And this is something that our agriculture system in the last few years has been about specialize on one thing, do one thing. But if the market changes or there's a disease, you get wiped out and it really hurts you. I'm a big fan of diversification. If you can diversify your product across animal and plant and have a few different plants as well as maybe one or two different animals that produce a couple of different types of crops and food options for you, you're a lot safer than if you've just got one thing that you're relying on for an income. So this YouTube channel has afforded me some very interesting connections with people around the world. One of them I'm actually going to mention, um, a fellow from Mongolia, a young man that's an engineer, contacted me the other day. And I had a fairly long chat with him about different types of greenhouses and heating options because... Even though we're extremely different cultures, Mongolia and Manitoba are pretty similar in climate. I mean, we get down to about the same temperatures and we go up to about the same temperatures. We've got a wide range of warm summers and cold winters. And it's almost like we're in this, the same, well, we are in the same climate zone. So the concerns that he had in growing the greenhouse are extremely similar to the concerns we have here. But it was really cool to discuss this with someone from a culture that's so absolutely different from my own. That being said, I really appreciate the comments I've been getting on these greenhouse videos. I've gotten a lot of good ideas from you guys that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. So please keep it up. Contact me through here or through my Facebook page. I reply to most people. Although I do want to make one thing clear is that the way I reply is from YouTube Studio, which lists up all the replies on there. And sometimes it doesn't show me what happens in a conversation. It only puts the initial reply in. So if I'm not replying back, I have so many videos and so many comments is that you get lost sometimes. So if you get into a conversation with me, I'm going to suggest possibly emailing me. My email is on the about section of the Simple Tech page, or contact me through my Facebook page, which the link is in the description below. That being said, loved having you. Hope to have you again. Have a great day, eh?